Greetings to GTV viewers. I am Dr. Sudhakar Janalagadda, President of American Association of Physicians of Indian Origin, established 40 years ago. RP represents the interest of more than 80,000 doctors in the USA. This is the first time RP is doing community outreach program. We want to serve the community and we picked November because of Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And I'm happy to say that, that this is the first time I'll be doing the community outreach program. It's my esteemed honor to introduce our today's moderators, Dr. Vandana Agarwal, Dr. Satish Kathula. Without further ado, as the president of National RP, I inaugurate first community outreach program. Thank you. Hello viewers. My name is uh, Dr. Satish Kathula. I'm a medical oncologist and hematologist. Uh, we are here to talk about lung cancer today. Lung cancer is the third most common cancer and about 250,000 people are diagnosed every year in the US. And it is the leading cause of cancer death, not only in the US, but worldwide. About 1.6 million people die from lung cancer every year all over the world. And yet it is unrecognized by many, including physicians. Uh, November is the Lung Cancer Awareness Month and we have eminent physicians with us to educate our viewers about lung cancer, including its symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment options. We have Dr. Sanjay Dogra with us, who is a, an interventional pulmonologist, board certified, and he's the director of lung nodule program at William Beaumont Hospital in Detroit, Michigan. Dr. Dogra, could you explain our viewers, what causes lung cancer? Of course, it has a lot of risk factors, but the most common uh, people should know is smoking and secondhand smoke. Besides that, other significant factors are air pollution, comma, asbestos exposure, radon exposure. And now it has been learned that people who smoke and have been exposed to are taking beta carotene supplements have increased risk of lung cancer. But more or less, smoking remains the most hazardous risk factor for developing lung cancer. So Dr. Dogra, what are some of the symptoms of lung cancer? So as you know, most of time it remains asymptomatic and those people who present with symptoms, most common symptoms is unexplained long-standing cough and sometimes associated with blood in the sputum. Beside that, unexplained weight loss or loss of appetite, sometimes chest pain, and these are the most common symptomatology. But we should always be concerned if there's a cough which is not resolving, has been staying for a few weeks, we should always check for lung cancer, in, particularly in those patients who have risk factors which we discussed in the previous question. So how is uh, lung cancer diagnosed? This is one of the common questions people have. How is it diagnosed? Defined a screening criteria is a CT scan uh, of the lungs, which can tell us about any opacity or any lesion in the lungs. And that, that initiate the whole process. After we find it on the CT scan, we can go ahead and do invasive testing that can be a CT guided biopsy if the lesion is very peripheral, are using a technique via bronchoscopy. And the latest uh, evolution in that field is happening so fast. Now we are going towards the route of navigational bronchoscopy and the last in the series is robotic bronchoscopy. So Dr. Dogra, let's talk about uh, the staging. Uh, what is staging and how important it is? But more important is the staging because the treatment depends on staging and also the survival spread so much depends on the staging so staging is depends that if the cancer is still limited to the lungs or it has gone to the lymph glands which are basically small glands which are present all over the lungs especially in the midline what we call is a mediastinum and then if cancer has spread outside of the lungs to distant organs so based on that uh, we stage the lung cancer but most important is to stage lymph nodes and we need to sample those lymph nodes. Based on that, we can classify lung cancer from stage one up to stage three B and then four if it is spread outside the lungs. But 
staging is very important and can be done with the newer techniques including what we call is endobronchial ultrasound whereby we go inside the windpipe with a camera and a very miniature ultrasound and we look at those lymph nodes sample them and we can absolutely stage uh, all the lung cancers if some lymph nodes are not accessible to endobronchial ultrasound then we call our thoracic surgery colleagues to do a procedure called media stenoscopy to sample remainder lymph nodes if needed and that is how we stage the lung cancer inside the lung cavity outside lung cavity it depends where the lung cancer has spread to say for example liver or um, bones then we can biopsy those also and to stage the lung cancer while the entire nation went on a lockdown we helped thousands of schools and colleges reconnect with their students and helped students continue studying from home from early child development schools in mauritius to tribal welfare schools in andhra pradesh and telangana erudex was used as a single platform to teach and keep in touch with their students remotely teachers at prestigious organizations such as kendriya vidyalaya namodaya vidyalaya samiti army public schools and many other private institutions are able to conduct classes and assign tests away from their campuses to make learning from home easy for your students we offer a seamless experience across all devices including smartphones make most of our features such as animated video lessons mock test series for jee neat mset and bitsat and conduct live classes with zoom or any other video conferencing apps so don't let anything stop your students from reaching their goals get erudex for your school or college today stay home stay safe the next question i have dr dogra is uh, how do we prevent uh, lung cancer are there any preventive measures one can take when we went through all the risk factor as i mentioned smoking is the most hazardous of them first of all if we somehow come out with a uh, some kind of uh, awareness in society and community that how to avoid smoking improve our air quality that is one of the preventive measures but more than that once um, it has been uh, diagnosed and uh, then we absolutely have to make sure that we approach this high risk populations and diagnose this cancer very early because if knowing based on the statistics you know if it is diagnosed at stage 1 and is removed immediately then the prognosis is so good almost in 90% range at 5 years so screening is very important we have to identify those high risk populations which as per united states task force at least in the united states is between age 55 to 77 and who have smoked for more than 30 pack years and have not quit smoking for 15 years they should have a screening ct every year and based on that we can hopefully catch these nodules very early in stage 1 or at the most stage 1 a or 1 b when the surgery can be offered so thank you dr dogra that was an excellent uh, uh, you know answers and uh, appreciate uh, you coming here to talk to us today Surgery is a very important component of the treatment of lung cancer and we have Dr. Rishi Reddy with us. Dr. Rishi Reddy is a thoracic surgeon and is a professor of surgery and is the chair of University of Michigan Comprehensive Robotic Surgery Program. Dr. Reddy, could you explain our viewers uh, what is the role of surgery in lung cancer? Surgery is currently the only real form of curative therapy that we have for lung cancer. and is predominantly used in cancer when it is uh, still early stage and localized just in the lung or may have spread to the lymph nodes in the center part of the chest and surgery may be used in combination with chemotherapy or radiation uh, but surgery still offers the only ability for us to be able to remove the tumor outside the body as well as to sample and check the lymph nodes to make sure that the cancer hasn't spread uh, to the lymph nodes um, at the time of surgery Also, can you tell us about uh, the minimally invasive surgery and the robotic surgery and the difference between those two? 
Now, also, that's a great question about minimally invasive surgery. So minimally invasive surgery for lung cancer has been around for more than 20 years. Uh, the traditional form is called video assisted thoracoscopic surgery and surgeons will use three to four small incisions and ports and a camera to make incisions on either side of the chest to remove the lung. Robotic surgery is a variation of this that has been around now for more than 10 years um, and is growing increasingly popular. There may be some subtle advantages with using robotic surgery, um, but the full advantages are still being evaluated. The main thing I think is that at this point, uh, especially in the developed world, that minimally invasive surgery, whether robotics or non-robotics, really should be the standard of care for early stage lung cancer. So what is the cure rate uh, with the surgery, whether robotic or minimally invasive? Uh, what is the cure rate we are talking about with surgery in lung cancer? So the cure rate after surgery really depends ultimately on the staging and also the, the treatments uh, in addition to that. Historically, for early stage lung cancer, meaning lung cancer that's very small and located just in the lung and has not spread to the lymph nodes, the cure rate was as low, or the five-year survival rate rather, was only about 70%. But that's also because in the early studies, many people also had bad emphysema, bad heart disease, and other comorbidities that uh, decreased that survival rate. The newer data suggests that with early stage cancer, we're seeing 80 to 85% five-year survival rates uh, after surgery. So that's still not as good as other cancers, but we're improving with lung cancer all the time. So what are the factors you consider for, for a patient to be a surgical candidate? What do you look at when somebody comes to your surgery and how do you determine whether they can withstand the surgery or not? That's an excellent question, thank you. The factors we look at to determine if someone's a surgical candidate really depend on their physical function and their pulmonary function or their lung function. So everybody who's getting lung surgery should have what we call pulmonary function tests where you're breathing into a machine and they're evaluating how well your lungs are working. So that is one factor. And then also what your overall uh, health is, how far you're able to walk, making sure that you don't have overriding heart disease or other major things that could cause uh, you to have complications during surgery or after surgery. So if someone has good lung function um, and someone is able to walk and has good physical function, they should be able to tolerate most types of lung surgery. Thank you so much, Dr. Reddy, for your, your time to educate us about the surgery, the role of surgery in lung cancer. Thank you. Radiation is one of the components of the treatment of lung cancer as well. And we have uh, Dr. Dattatreya Nori, who is a very well-known radiation oncologist, is the chair and the professor of radiation oncology at New York Presbyterian and Cornell University, and is the recipient of Padma Sri Award for his contributions in oncology. Dr. Nori, uh, please tell us what is radiation, what is the role of radiation in lung cancer, and what are some of the advances in the field of radiation oncology? Uh, radiation therapy for lung cancer uses high energy beam called X-rays to destroy cancer cells by damaging the DNA. It is very effective at controlling and eliminating the cancer cells. There are many significant technological innovations that occurred in the past decade to deliver the radiation with exquisite precision. Stereotactic radiation is one such pinpoint precision radiation delivery system. It is highly successful in treating small lung cancer lesions with excellent long-term outcome in excess of 90% local control we started using this stereotactic radiation in the beginning many years ago in inoperable cancers, lung cancers, early lung cancers, as Dr. Reddy pointed out, inoperable. The results were so great, so good in inoperable, we moved the concept to treating operable lung cancers also. So even in operable, the outcomes are really outstanding. What is that 
this technique is so important, so beneficial to avoid that. It is because the treatment is very precise. The large doses of radiation are delivered in a short period of fractions, one to four in a week, compared to five to six weeks of radiation treatments are long protracted. So one advantage for patients is a short one week treatment in one to four fractions. And this is uh, highly, extremely accepted by the patients because of the outpatient nature, short duration of treatment and toxicity is less. In terms of uh, biology, this uh, stereotactic radiotherapy is superior to conventional radiation when we combine with uh, the latest immunomodulation drugs. This is something is also very important. It works better than conventional radiation uh, in combination with systemic uh, immunotherapy. The other advanced radiation modalities are intensity modulated radiotherapy. This is self-explanatory. Intensity modulation means we are intensifying the radiation dose to the center of the tumor and minimizing the radiation to the other areas. So, so intensity is modulated. It significantly reduces the toxicities from the treatment. We use this technique for locally advanced lung cancers when combined with the chemotherapy and immunotherapy. The other modality we commonly use is called four-dimensional planning and delivery system. Why it is four dimensional? We know the three dimensions for any object. The fourth dimension is the motion, movement. So when cancers in the lung are moving with the lung, we use this technique, what we call respiratory gating, to synchronize with the breathing cycle for tumors that move within the lung. So this is also extremely, extremely useful technique for radiation oncologists. The last but not the least is the proton beam radiation therapy for tumors that are adjacent to critical structures such as spinal cord, heart, esophagus in the chest. The standard radiation treatment deposits most of its energy through and through the tumor and also to the adjacent normal structures. Whereas this proton beam therapy deposits the entire energy of radiation only within the tube. Chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and target therapy have actually changed the landscape of lung cancer treatment. And we have a medical oncologist with us, Dr. Vandan Agarwal, who is a board certified medical oncologist and hematologist. And she's the co-chair of RP Observership Program. Dr. Vandana, uh, could you explain us uh, what is chemotherapy, what is immunotherapy, and what is targeted therapy and how are they given and what are the differences in their success rate and what are the side effects? Chemotherapy are medications which are given to cancer patients to treat cancer. Either they can be given alone or in combination. Immunotherapy is a recent advance in lung cancer management, and these are checkpoint inhibitors. They increase the immune system of patients uh, to fight cancer on their own by increasing the immunity. Targeted therapy is for patients who express certain targets, and there are currently eight of them. For some, we have treatment, and some we don't. And these uh, targeted therapy helps target the cancer target without affecting the normal healthy cells. You may get some elevation in your liver enzymes or nausea or some effect on the lung called as interstitial pneumonitis. As far as immunotherapy is concerned, it is extremely well tolerated, but it has side effects which we monitor, which include diarrhea, uh, some effect on the lung, which may cause shortness of breath, 
fatigue and some effect on thyroid as well as the pituitary gland. Side effects of chemotherapy are several and they are all manageable. Depending on the medications we use, uh, they can cause hair loss, uh, nausea, vomiting, effect on the blood count, um, maybe some tingling numbness and hands and feet, maybe some sores in the mouth or diarrhea. And uh, uh, if the blood count, when it goes down, they are more prone to infections, fatigue. Those are the common side effects. So what is the success rate of uh, these treatments? Uh, could you uh, enlighten us? The success rate with immunotherapy is the highest and patients are living longer and longer without with good quality of life. Um, one out of five patients can survive five years without disease. Thank you so much for watching this show. And definitely there is a lot of advancement uh, in the treatment of lung cancer in the form of surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and target therapy, as our speakers alluded. And definitely the five-year survival rate has gone up significantly. And special thanks to Dr. Vinod Sinha, uh, the chair of uh, RP Community Outreach Program, and the president of RP, Dr. Sudhakar Janwagrita. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.